Hey yo, what's up my future AI experts? Let me show you in this tutorial how to prepare your data set for the neural network uh, training. In this tutorial, I will show you how to transform your images so that your model will become more robust and will not get biased and also will not overfit, hopefully. Okay, as you might know, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the data set which is called 10 monkey species data set. And as you see, it contains from the images of beautiful monkeys. Let's get started. These are the imports which we are going to need for this tutorial. And here's the train data set pass and test data set pass. The first thing will be to basically declare the training transforms and test transforms which we are going to apply later. So let's just define them first of all. Okie dokie, my future experts. Um, the first transform which I'm going to apply is I'm going to resize all the images from the training data set. In my, in my case, I just recite all the images of, from the training data set to be 224 pixels by two, 224 pixels. However, you might experiment and, and check like how your model performs if the size of image is a bit different. For example, 300 by 300. You might want to experiment and it's good to experiment because it might affect the performance of your model. However, just to explain you, why do we actually need to resize the images? The first thing is that when you resize the images, so you probably, in my case, like I have selected 224 by 224. So I'm going to reduce the average size of my images from the training data set. And it will help me to speed up the training process of my neural network because the images will become a bit smaller. So the neural network will train a bit faster. Additionally, guys, many neural network models expect your images to be of the same size. This is also another thing to consider. And thirdly, guys, in some cases, but not often, when you resize your images, sometimes it helps your model to generalize better, but it depends. This was our first transforms, firm's first transform. The second one would be to randomly uh, flip the image horizontally. It also depends, guys. Uh, it very depends on your data set, which transforms to apply. I'm just showing the example. Again, guys, you might want to experiment and it would be amazing because it all depends on your data set and you need to discover which problem this data set have, which problem it has, which it doesn't have. So you need to experiment, guys. Um, but basically, imagine the case when, for example, why do we need to randomly to apply the random horizontal flip? Imagine the scenario when your data set is super biased. For example, I don't know. Let's say you have a data set of the of the car of different cars images, and imagine you have these images and majority of them are very biased because for example the cars the pictures of the cars have been taken from the same angle and you know if this is the case your neural network can get super biased to this particular angle and you know it just will not generalize that good so in this case you can apply the random horizontal flip so your your data set will become less biased and it can help for your neural network training, but you know, it very depends. It's just the example. Um, sometimes you probably will not want to apply it. Sometimes you want to apply it, but you know, it shouldn't damage us. So, and again, guys, there, there are plenty of others uh, transforms which you can apply. I will attach a link in the description below so you can check, so you can check all of them. Okay, the second one is the following. Let's try to, apply the random rotation as an example. Random rotation to a 10 degrees. And also guys, in order to train a neural network, we need to, we will need to, to convert everything to be a tensor. 
for those of you who don't know what is a tensor, it's basically a generalization of vectors and matrices. Or simply speaking, it also, it also easily understood as a multidimensional array. So make sure you convert your transform to be a tensor. And the last thing, but very important thing, So the last and very important thing, I'm going to normalize our data set, guys. Normalization is super po popular and super powerful technique. Um, it helps to improve the performance of your model. And generally, I would advise to always normalize your data set because it might help a lot. For those of you who are not sure what normalization means, it basically will do something like this with your images more or less and it's super useful technique and it's very helpful however guys i have specified the mean and start deviation values here so i need to declare them first of all but from where do i get them actually if you haven't checked my last tutorial please please make sure you do it because in this tutorial, I showed you how to calculate the, the mean and started deviation values of your custom data set. So make sure you check out this video. However, guys, one thing to notice when I've been calculating my mean and started deviation, I resized my training data set to be 224 by 224 pixels. So when you calculate your mean and started deviation, and you, and you will need to resize your training data set for that as well. Make sure you will use the same resize uh, values later because otherwise your standard deviation uh, will be different for the different uh, resize size. So make sure you use the same uh, resize size later. Okay, we prepared, we declared the train transforms. Now let's also declare the test transforms. So here's, here it is a bit simpler, so we just want to resize, convert to tensor, and normalize it. That's it, because we don't want to flip, we don't to apply any run, we don't want to apply the random rotation, we don't want to do anything else with the test data set, because it's just a test data set, and we would like to, to just test everything later. We don't want to use it for training, so we leave it like that. Okay, guys, let me run it. It works perfect, and now basically let's create the train data set and test data set. <clears throat> so guys, basically, we just loaded our train and test data set by specifying the pass. And also we applied the transforms, which we have declared here. So right now, these two variables. This one contain the, the train data set and this one contain the test data set with the transforms uh, already applied. Let me just show you some of the images, let's say from the train data set to see how we actually transformed everything. Okay, guys, so yeah, just made the, made the function, which basically just shows us the random six <clears throat> images from the train data set after we have applied the transforms. As you might see, as you might see, the images changed a lot. So before that, we had like a very clear images, but right now they're not that clear and we did a lot of stuff with them. Um, for the human, it might look like that it doesn't look very nice, but guys, for the neural network, um, it's very cool because it, it will improve the performance of neural, of neural network a lot. When you apply the transforms, uh, usually your neural network will train much better. So transforms are important. And the last thing, guys, 
the last thing we just need to basically create the last like training and and test the data loaders, which we can just pass later to our neural network. So guys, for this tutorial, um, we are going to use the mini batch gradient descent algorithm. That's why we, we need to to split all of our images into the small batches. In this case, the batch size which I will use is 32. And you might ask me, which batch size should you use? Basically, there is no precise answer. However, one of the techniques which is quite popular and which you can try to use as well, is to basically start with the batch size of 32, then check the performance of your model, then try to experiment and to see how it behaves with the batch size 64, then 128 and 256. Um, and just like choose the best one, which gives you the best uh, accuracy. This is just one of the techniques which you can try to apply. And yeah, of course, we would like to shuffle the training data set so that the model generalized better. We don't want to do it for the test data set, obviously. And yeah, guys, so now we have the train and test loaders and we can pass them straight away to the neural network so it can train. Simply as that, guys, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments section and check out with the other transforms which, are, which, you, can, which you can apply for your data set. The link will be in the description below. And guys, I will see you in the next tutorial when I will show you how to finally train the neural network. So see you guys. Good luck.